Pastor Laramie here. Uh, once again, we are talking about prophet, priest, and king, the roles of the husband within the home, uh, or the you know concerning manhood. To try to condense this video down some, I, I don't want to revisit too much of what we've already discussed in the manhood video, in the prophet video, but just to kind of reiterate, we are going to talk about being the man, being the prophet, priest, and king in his home. If you found those videos helpful, please like them, share them, comment on them. Uh, let's get them out there and uh, for people to um, to, visit, to watch them for themselves and be blessed by it. Now, uh, we discussed being a prophet in the home, what that means, what it doesn't mean. What does it mean to be a priest within the home? Now, I think all of us would agree, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, uh, we are a chosen race as God's people. We are a royal priesthood, right? We are a, a group of priests. Uh, that's what 1 Peter 2, 9 tells us. And so therefore, every single Christian is a priest, right? We are a priest according to uh, the word. And so what a priest does, a priest serves God and God's people. Uh, the high priest intercedes on the people's behalf. And so there's this role of service and protection that's offered by the Levites. Uh, we see this, we see examples of what they did in uh, first and second Samuel. Uh, we see uh, what, what is done in the book of Judges when there was priest. Um, you know, we get descriptions of what the Levites are called to, which were the priests in Numbers, in Deuteronomy. Uh, and then throughout the prophets, we see examples of, of what they've done. And so these guys carried swords. There was one point in time where they carried swords and they wiped out an entire people. Uh, they, they weren't just uh, meek. Uh, and when I say meek, I mean uh, weak, feeble men. Uh, I don't mean meek in the literal sense, but what we consider meek, uh, unfortunately. The, they weren't these weak, feeble men that just kind of hobbled around. Uh, they were essentially soldiers, MPs, right? Military police, that style. Uh, they fulfilled the law of protecting and serving the people of God. This was their role. And so when we think about that, uh, the task that was given to the Levites, the task that the husband is given in his home, uh, how do we protect and serve our family? How do we work and keep the garden that is our home? Well, we do that by fostering a godly environment, by praying for our family, praying for ourselves as the leader of our homes. Uh, protecting God's word. As the prophet, we present God's word. Uh, as the priest, we protect the sanctity of God's word within our home. As we hear our family members speak in a certain way, uh, act in a certain way, our duty is to protect the sanctity of our home and its godly influence, right? It is to be a place of, of peace and prayer. Uh, you know, how do we do that? Well, it's, it's being very intentional with our time. Uh, we are to feed our family God's word. We are to live according to it. We are to uh, protect them from outside influences that, that seek to infiltrate and pervert God's word. Now, does that mean that we hunker down and, and stay away from, from the world at large? No, we are to be a light in a dark place. We are not of this world is, is what we're told, uh, but we are in this world. So we are to be innocent as doves, but wise as serpents. And so how do we do that? Well, we slowly introduce our family to, to things, uh, our kids, and then we help them see things for what they are. Uh, for example, I'll tell you, this isn't a, a biblical mandate, but just something that we do within our home. Uh, we discuss tragedies with our kids. Our kids are five, four, and um, well, my son, by the time this video comes out, he'll be six. Will he be six then? He'll be close to six. Um, yeah, I think he'll be six. Anyways, um, we talk about death. We talk about death with our kids. We, we've had miscarriages. We speak on that. Daddy got the coronavirus. We talked about that. Um, you know, there's really no topics that are that are off topic, right? I mean, that are that are um, that are taboo. Now, do we talk about intimate details of me and my wife? No, we don't discuss those things with kids. Though there's not there's no reason for that. Um, but th there are discussions on their body parts. You know, things like that. Um, uh, we have discussions on, you know, which TV shows they can watch, why they can't watch certain ones, music that they can and cannot listen to, things like that. Now, all of that has to deal with, you know, are they mature enough to handle this or not? Video games, I think, is another great example. We let our kids play video games at this point, uh, but one of the things we discuss with them is, okay, this game is for entertainment. You're not being entertained if you're getting angry at losing this game. Make sure your attitude is 
one of gratitude and fun and you're enjoying this, use this as an opportunity to, uh, to endure when you're, when you're frustrated because you can't be the stage, keep trying. But I don't want to hear you getting upset at the game. Um, you know, so there's, and if they do get upset, well, that's when it, it, it turns off. And so on one end, I can hear people saying, well, you know, that just helps them mask their, their frustration, but they're a kid. They don't mask their frustration well. So that gives me a teaching opportunity for them. Uh, to do that. Do I let them play bloody video games? Of course not. They're playing Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong, little games that, that are fun for them. So anyway, that's an aside. The thing that I want to stress here is, am I teaching my kids a biblical worldview? Am I praying for them? Am I seeking to protect and serve my family in a way uh, that leads them to Christ, that leads them to godliness? Am I protecting my own heart uh, whenever there's an issue that arises? Uh, I had a situation with my wife and I just recently, if I'm being candid, where uh, I was speaking uh, poorly about someone else, uh, jokingly, but it, it was in it was in poor taste. And so, as my wife brought it to my attention, uh, I had to do some repenting because it was it was done in poor taste. And so, <clears throat> is that something that I enjoy? No. But looking back, I'm grateful for my wife being able to present these things to me, so I am able to serve her through repentance. I'm not going to say humility and make it sound like I'm some humble guy, but like through repentance, right? God brought about con uh, rep uh, conviction to my heart and repentance. And through that, God's grace uh, shined greatly in that situation. I was able to, to repent and uh, speak to my wife about it and, and kind of, uh, excuse me, <coughs> and we were able to get through it. And so it, it definitely helped me a lot in that moment. But if we are not seeking to keep Christ and honor him uh, as holy in our home, striving to look to him as the author and perfecter of our faith uh, and, and desiring to really uh, have a Christ centered home, those things will fall by the wayside. If I'm trying to rule with an iron fist and, and, and excuse my poor behavior, uh, there's nothing godly about that. And so uh, these are some some little things concerning the priesthood of the man in the home. Am I serving my family? Am I praying for them? Am I protecting the sanctity within my home uh, for the sake of Christ? Is that what I'm doing? Am I training my kids uh, in a way that, that uh, leads them to Christ, that leads them to understanding that the, the world isn't this evil place that we stay away, away from? The world is this place that needs Christ. And so as we go out, our desires should be to reach the lost and to pray for them, to preach to them, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with them, to have empathy and compassion with them, uh, maybe getting a little dirty along the way because they need to see that we're dirty too. And when I say dirty, I don't mean sinning. I just mean meeting people where they're at, right? Not a, oh, I can't do that. No, no, no. Meet, as, as long as I'm not sinning, I have freedom to experience, uh, to, to meet them where they're at and to seek to show them Christ in that situation. And so, uh, these are just some of my thoughts on the priesthood of the man that's in the home. Like I said, all Christians are priests, um, according to 1 Peter 2, verse 9, and other places in Scripture. But specifically, the man in his home, as the priest, has the role of protecting and serving his family. Uh, that is a ministry that has been given to him. That is the calling that's been given to him in his home. So what that leads to, uh, I've heard it described well this way, is when you come home as the man, what is your duty in the home? What is your duty when you come home? Well, it's to do this and, you know, no, it's, it's to do whatever needs to be done. That's your duty in the home. Whatever needs to be done. You, you are the man of the house. You are the one who protects your family. Uh, you may need to protect them by washing the dishes, by scrubbing the floors, by taking out the trash or just by being an ear to listen to all the things that have gone on to your family throughout the day. Whatever needs to be done, that's your task. That's how you fulfill this role of servant leaderhood, of being a priest within your home, is you're praying for your family before you get home. You're praying for them when you leave. You're praying for them throughout the day. You're interceding on their behalf, seeking uh, to draw them closer to Christ. And so, once again, I, I pray that this is helpful. If, if you feel like I've kind of left something out or I should have explained something a little better, please feel free to reach out to me. Let's talk about it. But um, as we always say, like, share, um, subscribe to the channel that we have on YouTube. Um, share these videos, comment on them, message me. 
uh, let's get the word out there that there is godly content that is going out uh, week in and week out, and we're trying to pump out as much as these, uh, much as much of these videos as we can, uh, with the desire of reaching the lost, reaching uh, Christians uh, to help them, equip them uh, within their own home, so they can uh, build up a sure foundation with their home, and then they're able to go out and take this good news that they've learned, the, these tools that they've learned, uh, to the world. Uh, the world needs Christ. That, that's what the world needs. There is no other uh, thing greater. There's nothing greater. It, it's Christ, and, and, and that's it. We need to make sure that that is at the forefront of our minds. Uh, also, feel free to go to our website. Just Google Community Baptist Church Victoria. I, I keep forgetting to look up the address. It's cbcvictoria.org, I think. Um, but yeah, feel free to check that out and uh, let us know your thoughts. Check out the sermons that are on there. You can give on the website. Plenty of options for you. Uh, plenty of good content, resources. We have uh, our, our sermons going on, on um, Google Play, podcast app, all those things. It, we, we try to put out as much as we can. So I hope you are able to take advantage of these things. And um, once again, as these go out, we pray it blesses you. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again. God bless.